Hello, welcome back to another video of Ovichits Biology. In this video, I will discuss about how enzymes work. As I said earlier, enzymes are organic catalysts. They catalyze thermodynamically possible reaction, changing the covalent bonds in specific substances. And these substances are called substrates. This is an enzyme substrate reaction, which I have shown here. There may be one or more types of substrates for one type of enzyme. So, in an enzyme substrate reaction, the substrate binds to an enzyme which forms the enzyme substrate complex, which is activated, transient and highly reactive. This enzyme substrate complex can also lower the activation energy by binding substrate molecules in a way which facilitates the breaking of bond and helps to reach the transition state. The enzyme substrate complex soon dissociates into the products and the enzyme. The enzyme remain unchanged after the reaction. Substrates bind to a specific site of enzyme. This site is called the active site of enzyme. Enzymes can have only one active site. In this picture, there is an enzyme and the site which is marked by the red lines is the active site of this enzyme. Here the substrate can bind. As enzymes are proteins, so the active site is constituted by a number of amino acid residues which is located at some distances from each other in its peptide chain but brought close together by the foldings of secondary and tertiary structure of the enzyme. The active site of enzyme possesses a complex three-dimensional form. The active site of enzyme consists of two sites. The first one is the substrate binding site where the substrate binds and the second one is the catalytic site where the enzyme catalyzes the reaction. There are two different theories proposed for enzyme action. The first one is Fisher's template or the lock and key model and the second one is the Koshland's induced feed model. The lock and key model was proposed by Emil Fisher in the year 1894. According to this model, the active site of the enzyme exists in the proper conformation for the catalytic activity, even in the absence of the substance. Thus, the active site provides by itself is a rigid, pre-shaped template fitting with the size, form and groups of the substrate. The active site binds to the substrate without any change in the former three-dimensional structure. The substrate fitting into the active site just as key fits into the lock, then follows the catalytic conversion of substrate into the product which is released. Now this is the overall process of Fisher's template or the lock and key model. Some drawbacks of this model are that this model cannot explain the changes in enzyme activity in presence of some ligands called the allosteric modulators. And this model cannot be explained for such enzyme which have more than one substrates. Now let's move to the next model which is Koshland's induced feed model. This model was proposed by Daniel Koshland in the year 1958. According to this model, the three-dimensional form of the active site possesses a certain degree of flexibility and does not suffer from the rigidity of a fixed template. Means that the enzyme is not the pre-shaped template, but in contact with the substrate, it induces some configurational or geometrical changes in the active site of the enzyme molecule. Consequently, the enzyme molecule is made fit completely with the configuration and active center of the substrate. By doing this, the other amino acid residue can be conformational changes to create active site for the binding with the substrate. Now this is the overall model which was proposed by Koshland and this is the Koshland's induced fit model. So we have discussed how enzymes work and the different models of enzyme action. Thank you for watching the video. Please like the video and share the video and please subscribe my channel and keep supporting me. We'll meet you in the next video.